we started working together um, a couple months ago. When did we start? Yeah, um, I think it was end of January-ish. Okay, so it's now March. Something like that. And you um, previously, given a basic history, um, prior to working with me, you were, um, you've been, you've been to rehab clinics, you've been to therapy, years and years and years of therapy from childhood problems, parent problems, right? Yes. And yes. you've All also have been diagnosed with an eating disorder, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you have done years of work and um, clearly attracted to the HCG protocol. Can you see why it would be attracted to someone with an eating disorder? Oh, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> it's very attractive. It's super attractive. Yeah. And um, go ahead. Give, give a very brief history of what, where, what state of mind you were in before contacting me. Oh, uh, so uh, my eating disorder had resurfaced. Um, last year, it became very bad very quickly. I, you know, sought out help at a clinic, um, and, you know, it was helpful to stop the purging, um, but as soon as it stopped, I started the HCG protocol for the first time, and very immediately after stop, uh, stopping the protocol for the first time, um, you know, the eating disorder habits came back. Um, you know, I tried to get it under control. I thought I was getting it under control. I did HCG again um, because I had gained all the weight pretty much back. Yeah, and you and, see it now uh, not as like an eating disorder so much as it is the body image fixation and pressure and need to be perfect uh, and the, then the compensatory binging, right? You thought you were... Yeah. yeah, you have family yeah. history of narcotic abuse, uh, alcoholism, yes. right? And so you just mm -hmm. assumed I am genetically predisposed to addiction. I must be a food and sugar addict. Yeah, I have to have a vice to survive and all that, okay. um, all that stuff. <laughs> okay, so ultimately, um, you and I started working together. We had our first session. We we um, tell me how that went. Oh, it was really just like life-changing and that how you drew the connections for me in terms of what this really was about and not food but it was my you know worshiping of the body image and um being in that survival mode trying to you know defend that above all else and um and really just where that, how perfectionism comes from that, um, it, it was really metamorphosizing. I mean, it was just, uh, I really felt then a huge shift and it did help. I was having, you know, lots of epiphanies, you know, right. sitting you with went my dancing feelings. With, right, you went dancing with your friends. You, you allowed oh yourself God, yeah. to love the dancing. body. Right, and the body yeah. you have is, at the time, was around 50 pounds 50 to 30 pounds excessive in body fat. So you were, you would have yes, been considered because you're not super tall, right? How tall are you? No, I'm not tall at all. I'm like just barely five, four. Okay. Just. So, <laughs> so, um, you allowed yourself to, you honestly, wouldn't you agree that you were prepared to live in that body for the rest of your life? It was better than good enough. It was fine. It didn't meet your ideal standards or the society's ideal standards, but you didn't want the baggage of any of that anymore. So we actually discussed go, d intentionally doing a round of HCG just to give you the opportunity to see where you're at, right? To give you bearings around exactly. your neediness for the weight loss, your issues with food. And you actually had a really good round, right? You struggled a little bit, right? Because uh, we did have to have some sessions like, okay, we, we got to meet, I'm having issues. And then you yeah. worked through them, right? But all in all, yeah. you went close to 40 days on the very low calorie protocol with yep. not a whole lot of hiccups, right? No weighing, no. no concern, physically feeling really good. And then what happened? Um, and then I, I had some, you know, life events happen where I couldn't perfectly 
adhere to the protocol. I had to eat off the protocol for a few days in a row, and it kind of just flipped that switch where by the third day of doing that, I was okay for the first two days. With Okay, wait, day, hold on a second. You were okay yeah. with the first few days because you, you really gave yourself lean in and said, I don't have control over this. I'm eating yeah, to I hunger. I You gave yeah. yourself that grace that I talk about. Like, it's not... The biggest issue comes when you start to feel like you have failed. That sense of right. failure is a very huge trigger to, I've ruined everything, right, in relation to your weight. <laughs> Not just the perfection, and I want to prove myself perfect with this protocol. There's that, but then there's yeah. this, and I, um, there's the attachment to the weight loss, the gains, the attachment to the body image, which is really your addiction, correct? Right. Exactly. And so by that exactly. third day, you were like, okay, that I would, and, and we had said, hey, chances are you said I have to be, I have to be perfect this third day because yeah. of the weight component. And you weighed yourself I that did. day, yeah. the third day, you had actually weighed yourself and had a comparison to your doctor's weigh in, right? Yeah, it had gone up. and um, So you had gone up like three pounds. It, yeah, it was something really insignificant, but at the time... Well, you hear it so now, and you're like, oh, my God. That three yeah. pounds to you is like <laughs> failure. Fail because it you was. had gotten into that weight is the most important indication of success and success and success, and you attached to that 127 number or 129, and you were 132, and then all of a sudden... Yeah. It, you have to be perfect to maintain mm -hmm. that number or get back to it. So you have to fix it. So that yeah. third day, you came, you actually, in your mind, created a very tight box, didn't you? I did. You went yeah, right back into yeah. the disorder, which is I have to now fix what has happened, and the pressure increases. And what happened on that third day? Oh, I totally binged and, and purged, they had right? the next few days of just, you know, binging was, and purging. Yeah, binging, purging, binging, purging, and you s reached out and said, I, I, things are spiraling out of control, and you and I talked. What did I message yeah. you? What did you? The message. Did Remember when you said, because um, oh, you yeah, and I were texting, said, step back. I yep, said, hey. Said, step back, there's nothing to fix. Um, don't fix anything, step away, step away. Yeah. and how did that feel? Just immediately the oh don't God. fix anything. It was like taking all the pressure out of the situation. It was un it was exactly what I needed to see because it was such a crisis and there's so much heavy pressure on that whole situation in my um, head. Well, it's and heavy it pressure to fix. Diffused. It's the heavy Sorry. pressure to fix everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the feelings of, I thought I knew cycle. this, I thought I had my shit together, and I don't, and I suck, and oh my god, I've ruined it, and it just, right? Yeah. Because you're and always trying to get back. You're again. Yeah, exactly, yeah. in the it, cycle. Yeah. yeah, because you had fixated on the weight at the moment you were weighed at the doctor's compared to the weight that you were after you had those two days where you couldn't, didn't have the, um, access to being able to follow the protocol for some unforeseen circumstances and then the third day you had to fix everything because you saw your weight in comparison which sucked you back in yep. which is a sign can you see now that's a sign that you were attaching to your losses yeah now yeah. i do I, I i was convinced i wasn't and then but now i see that i, I totally was that okay so it you and i had a, yeah you and i had a session and we were we were talking about um, just, I, I had said, okay, you can, because you were like, well, I've already done this round, let's just, do I bag the whole thing? Is there any point in doing the next phase? And m what I had said to you is, you're, we need to keep you safe from any fixing. So we need to give you grace around the protocol, because if you go back into, I have to be perfect, your likelihood of binging would be very predictable. So I had said, okay, we're going to go into this next phase. And I yeah. said, you have these options. You either, um, option one, because we had also talked about when people get fixated in this spiral, a lot of times they've already decided, I'm just going to binge until I'm fat enough. Do you remember yeah. me saying that to you? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you're going to go ahead and just binge until you're fat enough. And you were like, yeah. oh, my God. 
because you had probably already con d done that in your head unconsciously. Yeah. Like already yeah. committed, I'm going to keep on doing this until I am literally back to what I have to be to finally convince myself to stop, right? There's that yeah. edge. Um, yeah. And that connected for you. And I said, okay, that's your, you can have that option. Just binge, 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 binge until you are fat enough to stop, okay? The other option was to say, so the alternative is to have absolutely no boundaries at all and you eat to hunger. So there is no third P3 limitation because those limitations might create a trigger for you to be perfect, right? Because you had already sucked yourself back in. I said, you can have all the lenience, right. you can eat anything you want, but you also need to give your body the grace to then gain. It's no longer you forcing it to gain through binge. So you know exactly how fat you're going to get. You are now yeah. letting the body get fat and then it'll stop on its own accord, right? The third right. option I gave you was, so you're going to follow P3 or phase, Dr. Simeon's phase two, which is low, sh you know, a uh, high fat, um, keto type. No sugar, no starch. You yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're to give yourself lenience so that if you do want a cracker or a chip or a piece of bread, you're going to give yourself the lenience of that without any shame or guilt. Okay. So yeah. your goal is to follow this, but you're giving yourself lenience if you need it. So you're giving yourself the right. grace. The fourth option right. was you're going to follow P3 perfectly, right? Yeah. No, yeah. you're going to do it and we're going to focus there. And you were like, okay, of those options, which one feels less risky? And which one did you choose? I chose three. Which is, I'm going to follow this protocol now, but I'm giving myself the lenience. I will not judge myself or feel bad right. about if I need a carb or decide to have starches. Right, that was the so, key that made me feel comfortable with that. Yeah, and notice how important that not feeling bad is. Yeah, not very, and not having the, the pressure. Yeah. But remember, I did say, in, no matter what, you're giving yourself, your body, the grace to heal from this binging, and and you're going to give it that leeway. We are no longer looking. You are no longer to even expect weight loss at all. Right. 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 That too, I think, was important. So. We ended that session. How did you feel? I felt really good. Yes. Now, um, what happened? I felt like I could do it. What happened after that session, however? <laughs> this, to me, no. was the <laughs> most important part of you getting to, to, to aware of what to do. Because I can help you on the outside. I can position you, but you have to go through this experience for yourself, right? Right. And okay. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that day I tried to eat to hunger and I was doing well until the end of the day and I felt like I wasn't doing it perfectly and that immediately burned on another binging per camp. The difference with that this night. binge, however, there was something very different about it. Yeah, it was because I knew exactly what was happening. I could identify every step of what I was going through, every phase, every thought process. Like, I had your words in my head, and it was a bit surreal <laughs> because, um, you know, I knew exactly what was going on, why I was doing what I was doing. Um, I think you said something to me that next day that you, you were like, for the first time, I actually witnessed the logic behind every single part of the process. The whole thing is yeah. so logical. You are, oh, you yeah, are literally, it was so clear. and you're making yeah. decisions. It's, you're making this decision, you're making this decision, yeah. and you could actually see it as, as, it, yeah, as a witness. Yeah. I decided I wasn't doing well. The, remember, do you remember very clearly that this, that you need to lose this weight and you weren't perfect and yeah. the, the weight and part of this? Yeah, and then how each thought led to the next thought, and then action, and then and then I can was, purge. Was so clear. Do you remember yeah. the decision? I'm going to purge it out. So then that yeah. the, oh, that yeah. is very specifically euphoric. That's what it was. You binge. You purge. Yeah. You saw the whole thing, step yeah. by step by step. You've heard me describe yeah. this a bazillion times. Yeah. And for the first I'll time, the you yeah. heard your logic, you saw the decisions, and everything was centered around one thing. The entire chaos is centered around what? That you can fix it and you can... Relative to what? That's still part of the chaos. You're fixing what? 
Oh, the, the game that there's a problem. The body <laughs> image. Body image. Yeah. Remember exactly. your whole point. The whole point of this chaos and you not feeling you were doing a good enough job. What is that whole thing about? Yeah, your image. Your body Absolutely. image. And this image yeah. of perfection, the image of like proving yourself, that weird sense and of having I have to, to attain that. And yeah. having to attain it to prove yourself, to be safe, that weird sense of the euphoria and the safety in the thin body, right? Right. That exactly. would you agree that that right there is the cornerstone, main root, foundation of all of the chaos. Yeah. Yep. That's the first step to the plummet into that abyss of that whole cycle. Okay. Yeah. So that without it. You got it. So you had your own witness while you're behaving this way, while you're purging, yeah. and you sat back and you were like, holy crap. What happened yeah. next? Yeah. Because you did this on your own. This was between, there was like a two or three day period between our last session where we made the decision of which one you were going to choose to yeah. you having a day or two of binging and watching the whole thing without shame and guilt. Yeah. You just watched the whole yeah. thing like step by step by step. And then yeah. what happened? And then the next day I, I decided, no, I am going to make this decision to not to give myself the grace um, to not be a slave to this body image, to not care, to whatever happens to my body happens, I'm going to give it the environment it needs to just live, which means just eating the hunger as best as I can and have, know that this is a learning process. Eating the hunger, I'm not going to get it 100% right away. And that's what I did the next day. I my What happened to your... Was the, Tell me what happened to the whole impulse to binge. Oh, it vanished because I, I told myself it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. And, and it wasn't and you, perfect, yeah. and it was totally okay. You became your advocate. <laughs> yeah. You you actually became the advocate of the body and of yourself. Yeah. So yeah. you gave yourself yeah. all this space. Um, did you have any, like, cravings left over from the no. binging that made you, like, want more? Did you have any addictive, like, sugar problems? Did you have any oh, of that? No. So, essentially, no. when you said, I am no longer fixing, I'm not going to fix what I did yesterday and the day before. Right, right. I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to eat to hunger. And did you follow the P3 guidelines or did you give yourself full grace of anything? I give myself grace. Good. Good. Yeah. And, and and can you see how that would be more important to your, even if we look at this biologically and hormonally, that because your mind and your perceptions were the vulnerability, you're better off allowing those starches with freedom than to say, I can't have starches. Because that, again, ultimately is centered on the, the, the need to fix any damages hormonally that you've created. Exactly. Yeah. So it's safer for you hormonally to to be in a safe state of mind, which changes the inflammatory response from the brain anyways. So you had a day or two of just peaceful eating, which yes. gave you yes. yet another witness to how, how incredibly powerful that body image safety is yes. and how chaotic your behavior can be from that point. So we decided, right, um, to test Truly, to truly test your sense of strength and um, lenience. Mm -hmm. So you are now back on the protocol. Yes. Not for weight loss, not for body no. image, not to fix anything. No. We, we don't, no. this is, that's not what this is. It's to be able to say, hey, I'm going to see if I can truly give myself grace mm -hmm. and, and forgiveness and lenience in a very strict environment. Yeah. Right. So you have a very strict yeah. environment and we had decided and I had said to you and you're allowed to if you can't be perfect, I'm OK. You just give yourself the lenience of and that ultimately what is that if you, if you can do this and not negotiate for food. But if you do negotiate for food, give yourself the lenience. What happens to your binging issues? They're not existent anymore. There's not even a reason, no impulse to do so because there's nothing to fix. There's nothing to, there's nothing to defend in that moment. No. They just vanish. So here we go. So it's been yep. a full week since your last injection. You've had a few days of binging in there, a few days of eating yeah. to hunger. 
and now you're going to go right back into the very low calorie protocol and to to give yourself grace and lenience to, to see if there's no pressure if you can kind of have a very big separation between food body image and rules yeah. perfectionism and then the need for grace yeah exactly so exactly. how do you feel about this strategy I'm excited I'm really excited I never would have thought to do it but I'm just really excited to try it because I Having had that experience now, which I thought was such a failure and such a horrible thing, I'm really glad that I did because it really opened my eyes up even more yeah. to what I think I still was not seeing. And I feel even more prepared, more, more, you know, just stronger. Um, so I think I can, you know, I don't know. We'll see, but I think I, think I can do it. Well, what, what would you say that you've learned you put oh, it in a nutshell, what did you just learn from all of that chaos? Um, just the most important thing is to give myself grace, be kind to myself, give myself, you know, have patience with myself. Yeah, to and, learn and figure and, it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. No, I totally don't. And why would I even expect myself to be or want myself to be? I mean, I'm a human being. Yeah, and you have nothing, I don't you have nothing to prove. Else. <laughs> you have nothing to prove. Yeah. Thank you for letting yeah. me share this.